So on this channel I rarely talk about my least favourite countries in the world. Most of what I show you is generally positive as most of my backpacking experience are so much fun. However, there are three countries that come to mind when people ask what are your worst countries in the world for backpacking. So in this video I'm going to tell you the things I wish I knew before visiting my three least favourite countries in the world. Number one is Armenia. Now this is probably my least favourite country in the world. I visited a couple of months ago in April of 2024 uh, and I really, really didn't like the country uh, for three main reasons really. The food was the first one, uh, especially if you travel around the Caucasus before, previously, you're in Georgia and Azerbaijan, which actually have really good cuisine. As uh, Armenia just didn't reach those levels. It was quite bland. Uh, there was a lot of fast food shops and there wasn't a lot of kind of traditional local places to eat. So if I was to go again, I'd probably cook my own food in the hostel. Uh, obviously, when you go backpacking, sometimes you do have to cook. However, it's quite cheap, which encourages you to go out. But I would recommend you cook your own food, particularly in Armenia. Uh, the other issue with, was for me, it was really difficult to get out of Yerevan uh, and see all the monasteries because that's really why people go to Armenia. Uh, one of its big issues uh, is that hill, Mount Ararat, which it's kind of famous for, which all its people kind of worship, isn't actually in Armenia, it's in Turkey. It was given to them as a gift, even though you can see it from all around that side of the country. Uh, so if I was to do it again, do a day trip. Uh, so get on via tour or get your guide and try and get a guide to take you around, preferably on a private tour, because that is just where you see the best of the country. If you do it by yourself, it's just so difficult to get around because the monasteries are all so far apart. And thirdly, I'd recommend you stay near, near the Cascade uh, area, which is basically a landmark. It's a long staircase that goes up a hill and is really cool for sunsets. And there's lots of bars and restaurants around there. Uh, a lot of the hostels are quite far away from this area. They're about a half an hour walk, um, which doesn't seem too far, but it's in quite a dodgy area. I didn't feel particularly safe. There was even a bouncer at the hostel we stayed at, uh, and that's quite rare for a hostel. Uh, so yeah, those are the three things I'd recommend if you're going to Armenia. The second country I'm going to talk about is Slovakia. Now, I did visit during COVID, so bear this in mind. Uh, however, I felt there was just nothing really to do in the capital, Bratislava. Uh, we did go for an explore. It's famous for its big square white castle. However, this was quite underwhelming in real life. Uh, there was also very, very few bars and restaurants to go out uh, and meet people at. Uh, so, yeah, we didn't have the best taste of Slovakia. However, what I would recommend you do is take a day trip outside of the city, uh, either go to the hills or go to where we went, uh, which was, it was kind of like a spy centre, uh, about 20 minute Uber ride out the city. And then also you can go to this castle, which was so cool. It was situated like right on the top of a cliff. Um, probably one of the coolest castles I've ever seen, actually. However, if it was just going to Bratislava for a couple of nights, I probably wouldn't have realised there was actually more to do outside of the city. Uh, so that's why I'd recommend uh, you you do go, don't stick around the city and probably spend a maximum of one full day there if I was you. And for the final selection of my three least favourite countries in the world, it's Cambodia, which might surprise quite a lot of people because a lot of backpackers go whilst travelling Southeast Asia. For me though, it was just not a great experience at all. The food was absolutely awful. It was a combination of Thai and Vietnamese, which sounds good, but in reality it was overpriced and it was bland and it gave a lot of people that I know diarrhea. Uh, so half the time they couldn't even go outside the hostels because the stomach was upset. Uh, we also had an issue with the traffic there. Trying to even get into Phnom Penh and Siem Reap took hours at rush hour. So bearing all this in mind, again, cook your own food in the hostel for Cambodia maybe. And just be really, really careful where you eat. It's a lot less developed uh, than parts of Vietnam and Thailand. So bear this in mind when you eat the street food. For traffic, make sure you're always traveling at times where it's not rush hour. That's quite sensible to do anyway in Southeast Asia. But particularly for Cambodia, you don't want to be just be sitting on the bus for hours and hours not being able to get off or, or really get to your destination. And in terms of hostels, they're probably the worst of any uh, city I've seen in Phnom Penh, the capital. You've got the Mad Monkey, which is the big party hostel, which really isn't my scene. And, and the Ondas, 
and I'll leave some reviews of Onda as it was pretty dodgy, I heard, uh, with lots of older men bringing younger girls back uh, into the rooms, uh, particularly hanging around outside. So if you're going to stay anywhere, stay in Mad Monkey just to be safe, but you know what the, you know what to expect when you're staying there. In terms of Siem Reap hostels, they're actually much better. I stayed in Ondra's in Siem Reap. Much, much better. Two pools, a really cool hostel. But overall for Cambodia, try and avoid staying in Phnom Penh, the capital, if you can do. It is the transport hub. Spend as much time in Siem Reap as possible and don't rely on the food because it isn't great at all. Lower your expectations, especially if you're coming from Vietnam or Thailand. And those were the three things I wish I knew before visiting my three least favourite countries in the world. Uh, if you want to see more travel tips uh, from my channel, I've made 80 travel documentaries and also more things I wish I knew videos. So go and check them out uh, on my channel. Please subscribe. Uh, you saw all of this for nothing and I'll see you in the next video.